Hello and welcome to the Should You Buy for the Hellfire. We're going to take a look at the mech, its stats, its hard points, its hitbox locations and hard point locations based on the concept art, and whether or not you should buy this mech. Now we have to be serious with this one. The last one was the April Fool's joke, but this is actually the mech for April. So we're going to go through this perfectly serious this time. We have the Hellfire. It is a clan mech as it is part of a clan collection. And let's go through the base stats for it. We got the standard and collector's pack at their standard prices of $20 and $40. They come with three standard variants with the collector's pack having the HLF-1 uh, with an additional 30% C-bill bonus and the extra um, camel pattern. We have mech bays and premium time appropriate, 30 days of premium time for the standard, 60 days for the uh, collector's pack, as well as various cockpit items, titles, and badges. We have the Hero of the Void for $15, as well as reinforcements of the B and C, as well as mech bays to hold them, for an additional $15. We're going to take a look at the Hero and the reinforcements, see if they're worth getting, if they're pay to win, pay to optimize, or anything. We'll take a look at them as we get down to the stats. The ultimate pack is $70, which is just everything all together, which I will say this would be nice if it was $5 or $10 off for the ultimate pack, just to say, hey, if you get everything at once, it's a little bit of a discount for you, but okay, it's it's there. I'll just continue to say that every time they come up with a new mech. Early adopter rewards, the pre-order before the end of April, and you will get these early adopters. You get some cockpit items, the hot rod pattern unlocked on all of your Hellfires, some a couple new decals, uh, some new colors, and a little bit of in-game currency to help you customize your mechs when they are put into your mech bays. Now let's go through the mech stats here. If I can get this all nicely aligned up, here we go, we can see everything. We are a 60 tonner. We know we're clan and we're a battle mech because we've got a max engine rating here. So that's how we can tell that we're battle. If we were Omni, we would just have an engine and we wouldn't have any max engine rating. So this is good. Um, when we take the analysis of the hard points, we have to look at it vertically because we can't change hard points around on an Omni. Um, well, can't because this is not an Omni, this is a battle mech, but we can change our engine so you can adapt your mobility a little bit with this. Um, not really caring much about the stock engines, except for a few of them. Um, the, the Note 2, the B, the C, and the Void come with XL300s. 300 is a pretty good size for a mech of this weight, so you don't have to pay for uh, buying decent engines for them. Where the 1 and the A, uh, you'll probably not want to use a 240XL. It's sub 250 and typically not something you want to use if you can take an engine over 250 because of the uh, internal heat sinks that you get in a 250 and this is a standard and it's clan so why would you not take an xl if you're clan so get rid of that standard and upgrade it to an xl uh, so a little bit cheaper if you want to uh, have the reinforcements in the hero in order to get them fully upgraded because uh, they already have their endo steel and their pharaoh mostly where these guys will need to buy some endo steel and such but moving on from there, we have a maximum engine rating, and it's not the same for all the variants. We have two different classes to them. The 1 and the A have a 290 max engine rating, where the 2 and all the rest of them here, the 2, the B, the C, and the Void, have 360 max engine rating. So we're going to take that into consideration when we're going through the various builds. No jump jets across any of these. No ma um, ECM across any of these, but yes to mask. Every single variant has mask. Excellent. So let's pop over to the Spreadsheet Warrior and take a look at the uh, the weight that you're probably going to get out of this for pod space. Now, you probably have to do this on a full screen monitor at 1080p in order to actually see these numbers, but I'll go through them in total here. So we have a 60 ton mech with an XL engine. You're always going to take XL as a clan because you get all the weight savings and you're not going to die with a side torso loss. So you just take an XL. And we have the various engine ratings at the various breakpoints all the way up to their maximum of 360. So for the mechs that can only go to 290, you're going to th see basically three engines and probably only two engines here. The 250 rating, while it does give you a bunch of pod space, it's only going to get you going 67.5, which I think is too slow for a 60 tonner. You want to have a little bit more speed, probably about 80k 
uh, maybe maybe 75 is going to be acceptable as that's what it is with the 280 and the 290. They're very close. The 280 is that break point where you get an extra rating over the 275 with no additional weight. So might as well take a 280 compared to a 275. And the 275 is the break point where you get an additional heat sink in the engine. So in the 280 is your, your, your bet here. It gets you um, 75.6 without tweaks, 81.3 after tweak. And because we've got endo and ferro and they're small endo and ferro, they're both only seven slots. Even with both of them, we have tons of available slots in order to do our builds. With a 280, yeah, it's only a ton more to get a 290. So I could see a lot of the uh, um, the mechs that have that 290 cap just going right to their max and just that being the engine for them. So probably most likely going to be that, which gives you approximately 31.5 pod space you're probably going to round that up to maybe 32 with a little bit of armor shavings off of the legs and the cockpit uh, just a little bit there because you don't want to shave too much um, but also if you want to shave an entire arm that gives you approximately a ton at this weight so you can if you're just going to go for torso base weaponry you can give yourself another two tons just to keep that in mind for build crafting for the other ones that we have the ability to go up to a 360 I don't know if the 360 is that worth it. It starts to go beyond the realm of usability. You, you certainly can put it in. You can get this mech going with the 360 at 104.5 after tweak, which is ridiculously fast for a 60 tonner. Not only, you will be able to increase that with mask as well, because every single variant can take mask. It might not be that useful, though, as that is a lot of your potential weight that you could be putting towards weaponry, but it's up to your decision. I personally think that the ones that are capable of taking a little bit higher of an engine rating, we're probably going to want to be the 300 to 325. I personally think that's where I'm going to run mine. 87.8 on the 325 without taking any speed tweak is more than enough mobility in order to flank the enemies. That's that's faster than your average uh, clan heavy, which is at the the XL three hundred for us the for this particular mech, the eighty one to eighty seven. That's your that's your average clan heavy. So if we're getting the average clan heavy mobility after tweak, without having to take the twenty one nodes you need to get tweak with the three twenty five, it's pretty good. And even with that, we're going to get 27.5, probably about 28 tons to play with. And that is very similar to other mechs of this weight. The Ibn Jag has around 29. The Mad Dog has around 28 and a half. So this having just shy of that with better mobility in terms of its ability to take mask and have a higher top speed. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm probably going to run my ones that have these the 290 cap with the 290 just max that out and the ones that don't have it have a little bit higher cap i'm probably going to run a 3 or a 325 depending on if i want it to be a little bit more mobile or a little bit more uh, heavy hitting but back to the sheet here we can take a look at the various hard points so we're gonna go through these vertically we'll go through the standard ones first then the reinforcements then the hero so starting off with the HLF-1, we have a total of seven energy, three in the left arm, three in the right arm, one in the left torso, and three missile, one in the left torso, and two in the right torso. So for particular builds for this, because we are at a 290 cap, we're not going terribly fast. So I'm looking for things that are more like mid-range to long range, because we might not have the mobility to get into uh, to brawling. There is the question of how well this performs with mask, which might give it some brawling ability. So I do have a brawl build for this particular variant as well. For the brawl, you could do things like three Artemis sixes. If you have, I would say minimum of two, three or more is preferred in order to start to boat enough SRMs to make it really worthwhile for a mech of this size. So three Artemis sixes, say like three and a half, four tons of ammo, depending on whether or not you take the ammo nodes, which give you additional um, shots. Some five, six medium pulse lasers. Uh, maybe not you can use all seven, but maybe you could use all seven with just regular mediums and take a little bit more heat sink. Maybe 
drop your ferro. It's up to you to decide there. But take the max engine of XL290, take some mask, take some extra DHS. So you can be relatively fast with that mask. You can have that burst to get you in. And then you have triple Artemis 6 and medium pulse in order to do some damage at close range. Uh, another build you can do with this is a laser vom type design where you can do like two heavy large lasers and five ER mediums, the XL290, a bunch of DHS. Remove Pharo because you want to open up more slots in order to fit in more heat sinks. Possibly remove Endo. It depends on how much um, playing you want to do. You could drop that engine down a little bit to the 280. If you wanted to remove Pharo and get all this space, you can just have like 30 heat sinks and keep this thing really cool. You could go along those lines, but might not have enough weight to do it. But otherwise, you can do a pretty good laser bomb here with the two heavy larges, maybe four or five, depending on how hot you like your mech for your mediums. Then for a missile support sort of thing, you can do LRMs if you wish, but also you could do triple ATM-9 uh, for ER medium lasers, the XL-290, say around five, five and a half tons of ammo, extra double heat sinks. So quite nice there. Um, relatively good sort of energy based with a little bit of missile flavor. Next up is the HLF-2. And this one is a little bit faster because it has the maximum engine rating of 360. So we're looking for things that are a little bit more skirmishy with it. Uh, you can do a lot of the similar builds that you could do on the one as this has pretty similar hard points. It has six energy, three in the left arm, two in the right arm, and one in the left torso. So just pretty much exactly the same minus one from the right arm than the previous mech. And then two missiles, one in the left arm, le one in the left torso, one in the right torso, which is exactly the same, minus one from the previous mech. So it's basically a carbon copy of the first one, but trading out two hard points for a little bit higher max engine rating. So anything that you could do that would also fit from the the one onto the two, you can do on the two with just faster. So this would probably be maybe better for a uh, brawl type thing with more focused on medium pulse brawling. You could do a pair of Artemis sixes, two and a half tons of ammo, yeah, five or six medium pulse, a huge XL, um, double heat sinks, just go with that. You can do the same heavy large lasers and ER mediums design. And then you can do the same ATM type design where you have, say, two ATM 12s instead of three nines. And appropriate amount of ammo and four or five ER mediums to back up those ATMs. So very similar to the one, but with a little bit extra speed. Moving on to the A here, we have a lot of fun stuff. This one's quite good, and I'm actually happy that it is in the standard rather than a reinforcement because it adds some build variety to the Hellfire. We have four energy. We have two in each arm. We have four missile, two in each side torso. We have a ballistic in the right torso. So that ballistic is basically the only ballistic that you can get in the standard pack, and it's pretty nicely placed. It's in a side torso, so we can take as big as a uh, ballistic as we want to. Take all the way up to those gosses and ultra 20s and such. Because we have four missile hard points, and we have, uh, unfortunately, this one is one of the ones with the, the lower engine cap as it has better hard points, it looks like. You're going to probably have to rely on a mask if you want to get into a brawling range. But you can do four or more sixes, so like five tons of ammo, say four ER medium lasers, some double heat sinks, mask, and the XL290 engine which could make you into a nice little uh, brawler. Use the mask to get yourself in, brawl your opponents down, then get out with the mask. Otherwise, you can do the same sort of heavy large lasers, but you can combine them with the Goss now. So a pair of heavy larges, a pair of ER mediums, single Goss in the right torso, and you can do that. Also, you can do things like four medium pulse in the arms and then a UAC-20 in the right torso with a bunch of ammo and masks. That way you can do sort of a energy ballistic brawl. 
or even a energy, uh, not energy missile, bu- a ballistic missile brawl. While I tried to make LB-20 and missiles fit, I was like, oh, right, the ballistic and the missile are in the same side torso, so you can't fit that. But you can fit LB-10 and four Artemis-6, some ammo, double heat sinks, mask, the XL-290. So you can do a missile ballistic brawl as well on this. But now moving into the reinforcements, and this is very interesting because... These reinforcements are very close to the standard ones that have lower engine sizes, but just with the higher engine sizes. Okay, let's go through this. So the B here has five energy, two in each arm, one in the left torso, and three missile, one in the right, one in the left torso, two in the right. So it is extremely similar to the one over here except that it is minus two energy, one from each arm. Uh, otherwise, the missile hardpoints are the same, the AMS is the same, all that kind of stuff is the same. And it has a higher engine cap. So anything that you could do on the one that would fit hardpoint-wise on the Bravo fits with a larger engine. So you can do the various things, like you want to do the triple SRMs, some medium lasers, or whatever you wanted for the, those brawl builds, those fit. You can do the LRMs or ATM fast skirmishing from the side flanks. That fits. You can do heavy large lasers, a pair of them, three are mediums, because you don't have as many energy hard points as the one, but that can be done with a much larger engine and maybe more heat sinks, so you can be more heat efficient with it. But realistically, the B is basically just slightly less hard points and faster than the one. So... Okay, it's a, it's an okay trade-off in my opinion. We have the C here, the Charlie. Same thing as the B, except kind of like the A, um, although minus the ballistic. That's the, the big difference between them. They have the two energy on each arm, which is the exact same as the A, and the two missile in each torso, which is the exact same as the A. The only thing this is missing is that one ballistic in the right torso. So any of the builds that you can do on the A without its ballistic, you can do in the C, but faster. And that's it. Like, there really isn't much else to these reinforcements. I actually, I don't see a reason to get these reinforcements beyond if you want to do specific builds faster. But you probably will be fine with just the standard pack. But where it comes to some interesting things, we have the Void, the Hero. It is the only one with multiple ballistics. So we have five energy, two in the left torso, three in the right arm, and one missile, one in the right torso, then two ballistic, one in the left torso, oh wait, left torso, one in the left arm, and one in the right torso. So it's the only one that has dual ballistics. So you can do things on this, like dual goss, have that mask, run around the, the flanks, goss them, get out of there before a... An enemy can flank you, maybe have a few small lasers as backup in order to protect you against lights. You could do double UAC-10s, four or five ER medium lasers, maybe a little toasty. It depends on how many medium lasers you put on it, but it would have some good mid-range DPS. You could do things like dual UAC-10s, a PPC, and strip an arm or something like that to get some more ammo or to get a, a bigger engine because this thing does have the engine rating of 360. So it'd be definitely more of a ballistic energy-based thing. The one missile on it is basically ignorable. There's, you're not really ever going to take one ballistic. It just doesn't feel like it synergizes with many things. So this is definitely the energy and ballistic variant, which gives it a different play style than the rest, although it's not like just dramatically better than the rest. It's a nice different flavor while not being overpowered or pay to win comparatively to the standard pack. But yeah, let's pop up to the top here and take a look at the mech's concept art. Interesting mech. Uh, From what I understand of the lore, it was supposed to have like uh, supernova legs that they slapped a different uh, uh, chassis on top of. So uh, I'm not sure if that's correct because I haven't actually read the lore yet. I'm just getting the uh, theory crafting out of the way. What we can see, the cockpit is nice on the top of the mech. That energy, or 
probably ballistic hardpoint, because we do have some of those in the side torsos, will be nice and high, right beside the cockpit. So that may serve for a little bit of sniping. The missile hardpoint is similar. It's in the side torso, nice and high, compared to the cockpit. But where we get into is a little bit of an issue is the arms. They are a little bit lower. They're kind of a knuckle dragger. Um, you can see the energy is stacked on top so that one will be really down here and one will be on top. So instead of it saying being stacked across the top, it's stacked vertically. So instead of being stacked horizontally, which would have kept them all higher, but yeah. it's just something you have to watch out for. You're going to have to expose a lot of your mech in order to get your arms on target. But more than likely what you can do is you can just stay with some of those uh, torso based weapons like we had the missile and the ballistic and such the the energies in the torso in the torso where you can peek over and fire those um, you're definitely going to be able to if you run uh, lock on weapons you'll be able to get your lock from relative cover because you'll be able to get your line of sight on the opponent and get your lock without exposing much of your mech so maybe a decent fire support in that sense when it comes to um, hitboxes here, is they got to pull another sun spider with this and just make massive side torsos? Because the question is, this here, is this a side torso? Is that arm? Is that arm missile? Is that side torso missile? Is this side torso here, this sort of um, vent area? Like the, it's like the hood of the, the mech here. Is that side torso? Is the center torso just this strip? Because then you're going to be pretty easy to shoot this thing from the side into the side torso. Like, it's not like you're going to be able to twist away and protect yourself with your arm. It's going to be very easy to side torso. It's probably going to be better just to stare and do a li little wiggle back and forth like you would be in a stalker or a bushwhacker compared to twisting and shielding. Uh, so... I have slight concerns about that. We'll see where those hard points are when this mech eventually comes out. Otherwise, yeah, it looks okay. It it's kind of strange. Kind of looks like it's like I've got sort of uh, <laughs> great big fighter jet intakes on the front of it. So maybe it's a gotta go fast kind of thing, and you know, that's what the the style is. You just gotta hit that mask and just plow into battle real quick. But Overall, I think it's going to be a decent fire support clan heavy. It's the first clan battle mech at 60 tons, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to be cool. I'm going to try it out when it eventually comes out. Uh, otherwise, standard pack is pretty good. And it's got some variety in it that you can do stuff with. Reinforcement pack is if you want to do the same thing but faster. And... The hero is if you want to do Daka. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.